Hello, future people. Welcome to Getting Tabled. I'm Jason the Bruce, and today we're going to have a look at the most recent Skaven Codex, but more importantly, we're going to have a chat about why do people spend so much money on these things? So, that is likely going to be the title of this video. And, and I'm dead serious. I want to actually talk about this. The uh, fact of the matter is, is that one of the big controversial things that gets thrown around all the time is how ridiculous it is that people are willing to spend $80 of their money on these things quite frequently. Um, so, I want to actually have a conversation about that. Um, spoiler alert, not all of what I have to say is a negative thing. Not all of what I have to say is a positive thing. There's actually genuinely arguments on both sides of this. But I will tell you this. If you're the sort of person that doesn't understand the value or why people spend money on this, it's probably not for you. Um, you really need to want this to see the value in it. Um, if you're not someone that's interested in Age of Sigma, this is never going to hold value for you. If you're not someone that's interested in 40K, a codex for 40K is never going to hold value for you. It is kind of pretty straightforward on that front. But we're going to start by having a bit, little bit of a browse through this and actually see what the books are like today. And then I'm going to bring out, I think, one of the best examples as to why People question these these days because I think there's a very solid reason as to why people have such a negative opinion at times. All right. So first things first, artwork is quite nice. I do have a bit of criticism here, though. I really think it's kind of rather pathetic that they haven't bothered changing the artwork. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie about that. I think the fact that they haven't given this a new piece of artwork is quite shameful honestly. Um, on the back, I actually think this might be the same piece of artwork as well, but that I'm not 100% sure on. I could be wrong. Um, better talk about what you're going to find in the box. Arise, children of the great rat horn. A great horned rat. So the interesting thing about the New Age of Sigma books is realistically the only thing that they've changed is this. I mean, there is a little bit more to it than that, but they've just given basically a wrapper around the old books to make them the new ones. That's the bit that I find a little bit disappointing. But let's actually have a look on the inside. Lovely cover art on the inside. And, like, the paper quality is good. There was a period in the 2000s where the binding in Games Workshop books were really bad. Um, I don't play these games as heavily now as I used to back then, so it's hard for me to say how well they hold up. But if you are someone that still plays these games on a regular basis, throw some comments into the... Com in Throw a comment down below and let us know if there's still issues with these books unbinding like they used to. Uh, my understanding is that it's changed, but I really would like to know from the audience. Again, lovely artwork, really, really nice. Uh, but again, it's artwork we've seen before, uh, to the point where I'm pretty sure I even know where this comes from. So. The big thing about these books that you will get every time is an update of the law. I'm not going to be reading through this page by page, but this will talk about where the army that you're talking about is actually coming from. So in this case, it's the Skaven, the Great Horned Rat, which is their god. It's one of the Chaos Gods in Age of Sigma. And then everything that makes them who they are. So I'm going to very quickly skim through this. And when I say very quickly, I mean it, because the important part about this that I want to show is 
that is how many pages you get of law. It's not an insignificant amount. And you could actually argue that there's another page there. Now we're into the, your product shots of the models in question that come straight from the box set that came out two years ago, three years ago. Um, I think that might be a new painted version. It's the same kit, but I don't think that's the same picture as last time. I don't remember the brickwork on these being quite so light. I think it was a much darker grey last time. I need to actually finish my one of these. I haven't actually finished it. It's about the only thing from the army that I've got that I haven't finished completely. I actually have one of these unbox uh, that I need to unbox as well. Um, I might actually try and get that done within the next couple of weeks. And then again, we are headed into artwork. Skaven are unfortunately one of the armies that don't get a lot of attention, but to be fair, a lot of their line doesn't need attention. The Rat Ogres really do. Uh, the Rat Ogres that they're currently selling are absolutely pathetic. Uh, they are so old it's not even funny. Uh, there has been newer versions of those models released since then for a very special kit that never got released outside of it, which is a real shame. Uh, it's possibly the easiest release they could do, but they haven't. Um, for the second year in a row, sorry, for the second edition in a row, all they've received is one additional miniature. Which is a real shame. Now we're going into the painting guide. So, have a look at this. Interesting. So, in the previous version, they actually tell you to start with... Rat flesh, or rat kin flesh. I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's a more orangey skin tone. And then it goes into the rest. But on this one, they're telling you to start with Cadian flesh tone. I find that very interesting. Um, hmm. I actually like the old version of their paint scheme. But, I mean, this still works. I think I prefer the, the different tone of the undercolor, though. Uh, dark blue armor, that looks quite nice. It's just the same recipe that we've seen a hundred other times, though. Uh, that hasn't changed either. I think they're different pictures, but the actual recipe hasn't changed. And shouldn't, quite frankly, there's no need to change it. And then we're getting into the obvious rules and how everything works. I'm not going to be going through and reading this. There's a hundred videos on how this time comes out already. Uh, and it's not the real main concentrate on what I want to talk about here. So, the thing with these books that people really do like is, for starters, the fluff that you get at the start of the book can sometimes contain very important things for long-term storytelling. Uh, there's been cases of that in the last few editions for Eldar specifically. I do actually have that book on the way as well. Um just because it's one that I felt I wanted. Um, and then obviously, you kind of you have to buy this if you want to play the game. I mean, there's not really a lot of choice in that. Um, well, not legally. There are digital versions of the books. That is what I purchased last time, because it was slightly cheaper last time. Um, because, honestly, I tend to go back and forth on rule books. Sometimes I'll go through this phase where it's like, no, I want to start getting rid of all my physical books and I want to have digital ones. And then I get halfway through and then I'm like, I really miss having the physical book. So it just depends. So here's another kit that they need to redo. Those war block jazz tiles are just it's disappointing. Another one I'd love to see get redone in plastic. Not everything is going to get done in plastic. That is not the way that the world works, but it, w it would be nice. The quality of the artwork is nice and well done. And at the end of the day, that, that is a large part of why you're buying this. It lays out everything in a nice, easy way to go through. But at the same time, this is also a product that you don't... I think the problem that people have with this product is that 
it's a product that you could argue whether it should exist or not. Because all of that first part could be online. And honestly, sometimes it is for free. But at the same time, it's so much nicer in hand. Actually having a physical book is so much nicer. And this is a really premium book. Like it's it's very high quality and it feels like it's very high quality as well. This is the thing. But there's two versions of these books that you can buy. The other version removes all of this and is just the artwork. And you're paying a premium for that. There's usually a ribbon in there as well. And I feel this is where the weight of the conversation gets changed a lot. And now I will show you why. Is the Codex for the Blood Angels for 7th edition? I think it was 7th edition. I don't remember. For For Blood Angel players, first and foremost, this particular Codex is arguably one of the worst that we ever got. Uh, This is one of, not the only, but this is one of the reasons why I stopped buying Games Workshop products for a long time. This killed my desire to support the company. However, this product is 10 times what that one is. Now, this is the special edition version of of the Codex, so it's not a fair comparison. But for those of you that have looked at the special editions of their codexes today, yeah, there is no comparison because this one makes the other one look like a child's book. So in this, you start with the actual codex. Quality of this book is absolutely phenomenal. Just as as high quality as the previous one was. Contents is the same. But you've got a premium actual cover. In the middle here, this is one of the bonuses that we got, which is a whole heap of artwork. And most of mine has never left this. Because it's all really nice artwork. So I've got posters of all of the different types of leaders. It's really, really nice. And I always kept this well protected because Blood Angels for me was always my first love. This is one of the reasons why I was almost going to rebuild the army at one point last year. And then this. This book I have gotten more value out of than any other purchase from Games Workshop that I have ever made. This is a painting guide. Specifically... For Blood Angels. All of it. Everything that you could ever possibly want to paint. It goes into a lot of detail. This is the sort of stuff that I assume that they're showing you on Warhammer Plus now. I am not a subscriber to Warhammer Plus. Uh, That is unlikely to change at this stage. And a whole heap of the models and stuff as well. That is exactly the same thickness as this was. In fact, I think it's slightly thicker. It's even got the Death Company logo on the back. Again, these are not the same product, but still, I think this is a very large part of why people don't feel that they're getting the value from them anymore. In the case of the limited edition versions of these games, this is something they stopped doing a long time ago. This is also something that would have cost them a lot more money. But people are paying this sort of price now, and it hasn't been that long since this came out, for the special editions of these products. Um, These used to be something that people would collect and could make their money back on. Sometimes. Sometimes people still do. I don't understand how. Um, I don't understand how anybody would pay full price for a second-hand version of the special edition of this. Uh, And I'm sure that there'll be comments down below that'll argue with me on that point. 
But I, I wholeheartedly believe that this is part of the problem. Does everything need to come out like this? No, of course not. That's just me being an old grumpy man. But I do think that they should be doing stuff like this occasionally for the big releases. So, for example, when Necrons came out this year, there should have been something to actually celebrate it. Something that the people that brought in at the time could have treasured because they brought in when their army got renewed. Not all of the special editions used to be like this. Some of them were more akin to this, but you would get, like, medals that can be used on the table as objective tokens and stuff. Uh, and of course, that doesn't mean that they're for everybody, and that's fine. Uh, like I said earlier, if you're not someone that's into 40K, you're never going to get value from a 40K codex. It's That's not the way that the world works. At the same time, if you're not playing Age of Sigma and you're not a fan of the Skaven, you're never going to see the value in this. But the quality of the book is very high. Very high. Uh, is there things that could be done better? Yes. Uh, the, digi the digital offerings definitely is something that needed to be done. I think it's something that they could probably do a little bit better at this stage. Um, like, given that it's literally... It's literally less work and it costs less to produce. Uh, the prices are cheaper, but not as cheap as I feel that they should be. Uh, I think there's some exploitation happening there. Uh, but at the same time, honestly, I think it wouldn't hurt to have an actual alternative for this. Warhammer Plus should be giving access to this stuff on release is my opinion it's the only real positive that's the only real negative thing i have to say um i'm very happy that i brought this i'm mean, very excited to get my skaven on the table eventually uh, i've been saying that since second edition when i built them and painted them um age of sigma is not one of the big games for me it's definitely something i want to play it's not one of the big ones though but to answer the question at the start of the video why are people willing to pay money for these? They're worth it. 